Hello world, I'm John Henry Dale, and you're watching Globo Loco on Oregon Music News. Our aim is to highlight the best global eclectic music in Portland. So we'll be bringing musicians, DJs, producers, and performers from a range of different genres down to the Zappa Room studio for some conversation and performance. We hope you enjoy it. Seattle. We played at Nectar Lounge on Thursday of last week. Yeah, we don't do Seattle too often, so it's it's fun when we do. It's kind of funny though. This month we have we'll have four gigs in Seattle, which is yeah kind of random because usually we only play up there like once a year. Really, mm-hmm. we're Even very dedicated. So close. We're very dedicated to Portland, so <laughs> we keep busy here. Uh, what other what other cities have you played in? We played in New York a lot, uh, San Francisco, Bend, Vancouver, BC. <laughs> yeah, we played Certainly. in Vancouver, BC actually earlier this year, right? It's kind of hard to remember. Yeah. <laughs> weekend after blur. weekend, it, yeah, it, sometimes it gets a little hard to track us down. But um, we're, I mean, we're honestly very dedicated to Portland. I mean, we're open to playing in other cities. We've played a lot in other cities. Um, but there's something about hometown love um, that we really respond to, and, and we're very happy to be playing here. So we're always up for other gigs, but Portland's home for sure. So you're not necessarily trying to become the kind of globetrotter DJ duo, you know, or would that be something you would be open to and want to? I mean, we're definitely, yeah, that sounds good to us, but we aren't as aggressive as a lot of other people. Like, we do our own bookings. We, We basically do everything ourselves, like a lot of our graphic stuff and all the promotion. We do everything ourselves, so it's kind of... Maybe we're not as aggressive as we should be. Um, we're definitely not as aggressive as somebody who has a, like a manager or something who's pushing them. So we basically take what comes to us. You know, we're very um, we, yeah, laid we let, back about we let it. Things come to us. I mean, when I in two thousand, when I started getting really serious about um, about DJ, I did have this goal. I want to be traveling all around the world. And like we had a monthly in New York for a while. And when you get used to the plane flights and the checking the luggage and the dragging stuff from one place to the next, the romance really starts to fade. And it's like, oh, I'd rather just travel. And so we'll do a lot of traveling where people think, well, aren't you, you know, like if we go to India for a couple months, are you going to try to get a gig? Like, don't you want to do this? It's like, no, I want to be on vacation. You know, I don't want to work, you know, rather than trying to tick off, like I've played in this country and I've played in that country. I'd rather spend the time in that country trying to find music than necessarily playing. Well, I think that kind of sums up like what we're good at. We're really good at finding music and we're, we love to travel. But yeah, like when we had our monthly in New York, like, you know, taking a crate of records across the country every month so it really does get old. That plane flight got really old. Six hours, though, maybe. So, yeah, like, (laughs) we're just, I don't know. We do like playing other cities, but we've, you know, we've had some good experiences and some bad experiences, and I think for us it's more about, like, finding music that other people haven't found. In terms of of what's coming out on vinyl these days, um, this was one of the best albums of last year for what we do. Um, it's a collective out of Israel called Solico. Um, this was their first full-length official album, Exotic on the Speaker. Came out on J-Dub Records out of New York, and it's uh, you know the producers take a lot of traditional elements um, and combine them with uh, different rappers, some American rappers, which makes it very accessible. There's Lyrics Born, there's Ghostface Killa, Pigeon Rye John, Rye. Della Funky Homo Sapien, Rai Rai. Um, oh wow! So these guys are pretty globally connected, then. Totally. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they they you know they get around. Um, <laughs> so they have a lot of collaborators and a lot of friends. And this is like a really great sound. You know, there's there's the heavy bass. There's a really heavy rhythmic element, a real good uh, traditional vibe as well. And in, in terms of some of the melodies and stuff. And this particular track, uh, Pitum Banu 2020, featuring Aksum. Aksum are a duo of toasters from Israel. And this is their song. All right, let's take a listen. Vinyl! (laughs) Cracks it all. So is this the kind of 
toaster style rhymes you're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. Aksum is the duo, and they they do have an album out, which um, I didn't download. I'm actually waiting for it to come from Israel. <laughs> so I was I checked the mail today, thinking maybe it's shown up, but it hasn't shown up yet. But yeah, they, this is probably their first big international exposure to be on this release. Nice, sounds great. I'm looking forward to hearing it at your uh, next uh, party, which is um, our next which party. Which is Andaz, right? It's and Andaz, yeah. And we do. There is a distinction between the parties. Um, uh, Andaz, we fo focus exclusively on um, music from the Desi diaspora. So this, for instance, wouldn't be something that we would feature at Andaz. We featured at Atlas uh, when we started Andaz in July of 2002. There was nothing like that sound in the Portland clubs. Nobody was playing Bollywood. Nobody was playing Bhangra. Um, you know, maybe Asian underground artists such as State of Bengal had come through town. And even that is a very different sound. As much as it uses electronics and it uses Indian instruments, it's it's a very different sound than the kind of, the kind of stuff that we were drawn to. And so when we started that night, it was just completely focused on the Desi diaspora, primarily Bhangra with some Bollywood mixed in. And then... We were still interested in other, you know, Middle Eastern music, Latin music, African music, Balkan music. There were a lot of other things we were interested in. And so over that year, uh, E3, uh, Selector E3 at the time, now DJ E3. So this is a collaborator of yours? Yes. He, he approached us about doing a more a broad-based night, an international night. And that became Atlas, which um, is the longest running uh, club night at Holocene. Uh, started about six months after they opened in November of 2003. Still going strong there. And so this, like Solico, is something that the three of us all feature in our sets at Atlas. Uh, but at Andaz, it's strictly going to be things like this new Urban Desi comp or the G-Town Desi or things like Ummer, Asian R&B. Um, so there is a distinction between the parties. Uh, the Andaz party, which is June 26th uh, at Roture. And you've uh, just moved there, right? We've from, just from the moved Fez After a pretty long run at the Fez, from Yeah, we, we started out um, at Lola's room in July of 2002, did a couple very well-received parties there. But there were a number of reasons where we weren't entirely happy with that venue. And the Fez Ballroom really seemed like a great spot. And the manager at the time, Blaine Peters, um, was open to having us do something there. And... It was a great success. We had a great run. It was still doing well up until the end. Um, the unfortunate thing is while we had a very successful monthly party, the club wanted something every week that was going to draw a ton of people, which a niche sound like ours in a uh, market as white as Portland, as small as Portland, was not going to be us. So they've unfortunately moved to an all top 40 mainstream format on Saturday nights. So we have moved over to Roture. Uh, we did an opening party in May and we're going to be doing our next night there, June 26th. And we're very excited to be there. They're, they're happy to have us. It's a great sound with tons of bass, which is very important to us. Um, eager to try different tracks out and have them, have them hit us there. Well, great. We're all looking forward to it. Can't wait uh, for the for the next uh, Andaz. And uh, just one more question before we go: what What do you think it will take to get Portland to become a uh, you know a global music town? That's you know say on, on the level. Is it just a population issue, or is this? Um... I don't. I think it's a diversity issue. You know, I think fortunately we do have a lot of people moving here. A lot of people are also like it's it's a constant influx and, and outflux you know people are constantly young people are moving here and moving away because of the lack of like serious jobs i think and lack but of most, diversity like the, right the, the but people the, that... the people that are moving here are mostly not people of color you know and that is what's so frustrating like i don't know maybe in 50 years like more brown people will move here maybe but i don't seem very hopeful about it actually mm. and i mean even though there's a there's enough I mean, I feel like there's enough people that there's all sorts of different creative scenes. There aren't necessarily enough people to have a big audience for all those different creative I mean, scenes. A lot of my brown friends have moved away because they're like, uh, I, I, I want to meet a partner or there's not enough culture here for me. And so that's frustrating, you know. But we're going to be here doing our thing. Holding it <laughs> we're, not, we're not going anywhere. No, we'll keep plugging right ahead. Bearing the torch of global music <laughs> in Portland. This is... Uh, DJ Anjali and the Incredible Kid, thanks so much for being here on Globo Thank Loco. You. Thanks for having us. Yeah. <laughs>